All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, so today we're going to be jumping in and checking out this game. Uh, what the hell is it? Call of Juarez Gunslinger. So you guys have been, a couple of people brought this game up to me, told me to check it out, said it's really, really awesome. Uh, when I told you guys that I was actually considering playing it, there was a lot of people that were like, oh, try it, try it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. So here we are. Um, I'm, I'm quite excited to uh, see what this is going to be like. Uh, I don't know what the stream quality looks like because I actually, this game would not run on my new computer. <laughs> uh, so I had to bust out my other PC um, just to play this game. So hopefully it's worth it, guys. Hopefully it's worth all the, ha the heartache. So uh, I believe this game came out like a while ago, like 2013. Uh, so it's older, but uh, I was told it's real good, so... Uh, thank you guys again. I don't know how long this game's gonna take, but if you guys want to see more of it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, let's do it. Music's so loud. It seems so loud. Alright, so... Story mode, arcade, and duels. know you sir don't believe so i haven't been here in many years name's silas greaves silas greaves the bounty hunter used to be ah well what are you doing here in abilene just passing through got a little business to take care of well sir it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer hell son it would be my honor to drink it i'm molly howdy I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. I appreciate everybody for coming and hanging out. Wolf, what's up, man? Yeah, I got my hair cut. Uh, assault, brother. How you doing? It's good to see you. Yeah, this, uh, uh, give me a call. This game was actually, I think the first time somebody brought it up to me is when we were doing our, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 playthrough. Somebody, uh, asked if I ever played this and I was like, no, nah, so... All right, headshots are always, yeah, let's see. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny so feeling. Sensitive. Gotta tweak the sensitivity, guys. Funny, haha? -ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. That right, should be okay. Art style reminds me of um almost like Borderlands, you know what I mean?
See, the good thing about our um, graphics like this is they age very, very, very well. Mominator, how you doing? And Travis, thank you for the super chat, brother. How you doing today? Okay, so, uh, O to see our current objectives. Uh, return to the hideout. Uh, do you road. guys see screen tear? So turn on v -Sync. Sometimes v -Sync will work against you. That's not fair. We're missing there all we the go. fun. Yeah, I knew those two morons would never let me through. Ooh. I had no choice. So, uh, in some older games, V-Sync will lock you into a frame rate that looks not good. Now it should be smoother looking for you guys. Uh, Nico Sim with the three months. Thank you so much. So what do we do here? Do we just run up and just shoot these dudes? Who's that? Is he with us? <laughs> okay, you earn experience by killing enemies. You need it for leveling. Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Did really blow it? Oh, yeah. I heard the shots, and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. Fire at will! Spread out, goddammit! They're coming from the rear! I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. I knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky. You're I'm, dead. All, I'm all about getting sneaky. Same thing I'd get sneaky in an old western. Maybe it's leveled up. Uh, you have one skill point to spend here. Uh, select one of three skill categories and purchase. Okay. Let me see. So we got uh, Gunslinger, Dual Wielding Desperado, Ranger, Long Distance Sharpshooter, Trapper, Close Quarters Fighter. We'll go with uh, Ranger here. Long Distance Sharpshooter. Iron Sights slow down time. You take your time when aiming. Uh, when you aim for a long or one-handed... Okay, that sounds pretty clutch. Watch out! He's one of them! God damn it, he's right behind us! Where the hell's that? Garrett's men were running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Uh, what 
Let me know if the game is still too loud, guys. Here. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Oh shit, you can avoid lethal shots when your sense is not a bad down. idea. Fully charged, press it would be a turkey shoot from up there. Did I just kneel a bullet? I'm done. <laughs> it's loud? Oh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Hey, this guy's gotta let me know these things. Um... There we go. Try that. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh, oh, oh. Saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. God damn him. Then, I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We got we'll cover you! Try aiming, you idiot! Truth be told, Never things weren't much better way. behind the house. I cut their numbers in half, but that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. You ain't going nowhere! <sighs> they made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. I don't want well. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside. Dead, None the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave. Deader than a rat in a trap! <laughs> Dirty Dave. And upstairs, I found Billy and Charlie Bouldry. How about that? Hey, you like that? Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. I'm telling you, Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. Keep this up all day! That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side.
don't know how many of those cocksuckers I personally put down, but it was pretty clear, even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them around back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. Run for it! Those poor sons of bitches are run for it! Many would have fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing. <sighs> yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Gonna cut you a new one! Oh. Right. Making my way past the castle of former foes. Cause that wasn't no piece of shit. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Finally, I had the stables within my reach. That's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe to toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked on tin star. Challenged him to a showdown. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. Okay, keep your focus. Use the mouse. Opponent reaches for the gun, press mouse one to draw your weapon, aim and shoot. Okay. And that you killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn staples. Right, we got another skill here. Um, truth seeking hints about nuggets of truth. Uh, deep pockets, rifle ammo capacity increase, carry even more of these deadly rifle rounds. And stepped inside, and BAM! <laughs> Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. Damn, 75%? Not bad accuracy. Weapon of choice, six shooter, award of choice, headshot, dual, Patrick. 
Honorary, honorably killed, uh, focus 90%, speed 52. So we're pretty slow on our speed. Seems like it was uh, a bit easier after all. Would you like to switch to hard difficulty? The game telling me that I, it was too easy. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah. After I came to, the bastard had clocked me with his colt. Old Norse, if you really wanted to do that, you could send it to me on Discord, man. And I'll, I'll do. I, I can't. And the kid tomorrow. surrendered. When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. Oh, shit. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Get another skill point? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, so let me see, gunslinging, uh, dual wield revolvers. Grab two revolvers and give them hell when you carry a revolver, you can press the wield. We'll see. The only problem with dual wielding is it's generally less accurate and you can't aim down sights. But uh, we'll give it a test. We'll give it a test. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. Cut a man clean in half. Just a double barrel, chat. They really made this shit seem like the, the real deal. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? That little son of a bitch shot Jim Bell! Put down your weapon! The kids escaped raised a huge ruckus. Uh, Hell yeah. That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Can't let the kid get away! Oh my God. Anybody see him? I had to jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could. Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up there. Suddenly, I was a fugitive. So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. Okay, so we gotta go I back tried to be town. stealthy and sneak my way past. This town didn't have a moment's peace. 
Like an alley cat. You! But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. Oh. Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. You heard me go to hell! Oh. I'm trying to be like an alley cat. <laughs> The kids share a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. They're shooting in the street! Get out here! Damn, this thing's even good at range, too, guys. Well, not like extreme range, but like this medium range here. Let's do this! Get your heads down! So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. That reminds me, I knew I needed Doom to Slayer find Shotty. a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. We prize them too high, if you ask me. Can't hide forever! Yeah, definitely using the shotgun because the narrator said so. 100% the reason why I re-equipped it. I'm here. Surrender yourself. This thing is kind of ridiculous. You won't. Stop. You're threatening the lives of innocent people. Where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. Oh, so you can only have the shotgun or the rifle. Well, so Billy freed us what? So, uh, we could be a distraction? It was like a quick time and I, and I messed up. That was so, so I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play them. Definitely got it.
Is there any more of these games that came out after this one? There is. I'll have to check out more of these Call of Juarez games. They're all around. Finally, I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. Dude, my man Belly is hanging out, So we out, stood Chad. there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. Adjust your hand position A to D for... When you hear the heartbeat, you can draw your gun first, but this will be noted as a dishonorable act and score accordingly. Ah! How did I not get the shot first? I was a little slow, I'm not gonna lie. But you're talking milliseconds. Killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys.
These guys have some pretty interesting names. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clanton. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead, and I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. Look good. Hello. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attack from on high like Apaches often did. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green, but often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo. But I knew he was with the cowboy. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong. And I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Just as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. Holy shit, dude. I ran ahead, as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. I mean, the old totally weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good. And he would know. Your combo meter will stay active 50% longer. Mm -hmm. 
And imagine my surprise when I found a fist full of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune, even the odds, and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. The old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs, Planton, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a Gatlin gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. <laughs> Sees me, I'm down. Muck, he sees me, I'm down. Muck, he sees me, I'm down. Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me. the cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps. And that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the old K Corral. There it is. Uh, you can also shoot the dynamite in the air. Oh, that'd be, that's cool. So this was the fourth and last game in the series? Wait, I thought somebody said there was more games after this one.
A few weeks after that dust-up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. Was there a movie Ringo with, like, Jamie Foxx or something? So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. But first, I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, <laughs> Johnny Ringo's Curly like, Bill Brocious. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys. <laughs> why is he after me, dude? Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise, and after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons wanted revenge. Can't hide forever! So they murdered Morgan Earp, and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. Wicked, when you get hit, like your vision gets all blurry and it's actually quite hard to see. Revolver's decently accurate, but when you need these like longer shots, better do some shit for you. I need to watch more gunslinger movies. Oh, Django, yeah, that's the one. There were killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other. And I was beginning to wish I had one myself. But I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away on the skate. And that's what drove me forward. Just take one off the body, bro. You just made your man. They say that Ringo was in fun. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. This guy kind of sounds like, um... Henri, the guy you talked to in The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. At the beginning there. Oh. Earp wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc oh. Holliday might have been. That longer should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. <laughs> but everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man.
Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because I, Clanton, was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. So, close quarters combat. You can't be bulletproof, but you can be more resistant on average. Every fourth enemy bullet shot from a short one will bounce off me. Up, up. Where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. It wasn't easy as those boys had good cover. everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. It's got my eyes. And where was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. 
And this area looks like it's gonna suck. Ed with the 25, thank you so much. Curly Bill. I don't know if I would want to be called that. Are you saying they ran? Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out of the open. Just gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. It took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Yeah, I did not expect this, guys. I didn't expect it to be like this. Johnny Ringo. That's incredible, sir. I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did.
Oh, my gun hand was too far to the left. Oh, got you. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. My late father pointed out to me more than once. God made men, but Samuel Colt made them equal. <laughs> I like that. It makes me nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of gunpowder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the cojones to come after us. As long as you don't light up a cigar, we're fine. Yeah, besides, George is up there on the rocks with that rifle of his. Nothing gets past him. The guys that I just killed... Hawking? Oh yeah? Well, who the hell is that then? Don't let him get a shot off! Uh, I guess the game didn't expect you to kill him. Reminds me of the gun from uh, Bioshock Infinite. The hand cannon there. I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. <gasps> Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves and killers, robbing travelers and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with Plummer, some were just regular oh. folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Can't hear you. Ah. What the hell hit me? Was it dynamite? Crow, the blacksmith. 
James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's sons. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering their neighbors. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. You're done. The plumber had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter, which I had no idea how to breach. Dangerous, desperate individual. I was outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was tough. Or had some kind of death wish. Seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. Watch out for the goddamn one stray bullet, one stray spark, and I'd be blown to hell and gone. Did I have any second thoughts about what I was doing? No. Wolf, this game is awesome, dude. I thought I was some kind of hero. Shit, it's, it's a ton of fun. The narration is the best. It's a really, really uh, cool approach to a game. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. I should switch to shotgun. Seems like I'm down. Down. Once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. You can run! And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. I 
Hold on one sec, guys. Couldn't really get into it, really only play for an hour or so. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a pretty straightforward just like shooter, you know what I mean? Um So if you're not like super into shooters then You know, this story is obviously pretty linear to it, it's it's more of a it's this is almost kinda like something you would see in like an arcade. Uh, but it is a ton of fun. You ain't beefing me. But it's nothing like a Red Dead Redemption or anything like that. It's just all about shooting fun. I do not deserve to die like this. You must be about out of bullets. Quick reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. Look to get the game you play at a bowling alley. Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my first couple shots, like where it popped. In. Well, all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. <clears throat> Fucking lantern on the ground there. Show yourself, coward. No room for error in here. You hit one of these barrels, it's gonna light this whole place up. Fire and hole. All it takes is one tiny spark, and boom. Thought I'd be safe from where I was. A sniper, hey. ghost warrior. It's actually a pretty good shooter. I do not deserve to die like this! Oh, uh, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking of Sniper Elite. So a Sniper Ghost Warrior One long game? bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted tube. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. What? <laughs> Instead, I spotted a ladder way into the mine from the opposite side. 
Wait. So that whole thing didn't happen? Come on, dude. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. <laughs> Come on, dude. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I was determined not to give up, however. As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Bob. 10,000? That's a pretty big problem. And I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. You must be about out of bullets. <laughs> But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. I wanted to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell? You know this guy? Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved better. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Sometimes them stories don't match up, chat. Plummer was clearly unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some time.
I'll bury you in a million pieces! I can shoot food! <laughs> That's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. We only shot 66% that time, guys. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Harden as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. Not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. That was a pretty nice mustache for a 15-year-old. They were just built different back then, I guess. I dodged death many a time. And that night in Abilene was no good. Why is that something? <laughs> I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob that and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. I thought the Texas Rangers got hardened. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me. Well, and... you have a good night, brother. I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. Fathers and husbands, brothers and sons, men with families who cared about them. He was a bona fide folk hero by then and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. Freezing my giblets on it. Ain't right we gotta stay out here keep a watch like this. Ain't nobody stupid enough to go after Hardin anyway. Better three hours early than a minute too late. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. I 
because most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun hands. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcomed presence. Tell Harden someone's coming for him! Some bitch! Let the boys know we got another law dog. That's right. Run. Get He's about to buy the farm. I wondered if Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my medal against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. Kill us all! I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me. Son of a bitch is killing everyone! 
In fact, I felt a certain hostility. I was close to shit. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. First kill at 15, kill the man for snoring. 40 more. And 40 more for breathing. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. No, wait. Okay. He didn't hit me then. I'm sure of it. That's pretty sick. Yo, that, that dude was... <laughs> that was so fast, man. I'm like trying to think of so many things at once. That man was faster than Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, do you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. Why do I feel my man's over embellishing on these stories? Who said it's hotter out right now? Damn. Uh, ever play Flash? I, I think I played the Flashpoint games. Those are those military games, right? Yeah, those are games I played before Arma. Those games are really cool. was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high, they tickled the nether regions of heaven. <laughs> a long time ago on a mountain Grey far, Wolf far was away. a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. And the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. 
Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution, and were more than willing to die for him. Sus. They saw me before I saw them. And it crossed my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea. For now that the shooting had started, there was no backing down. Kind of scared to surprise me. It was rugged country, right there. the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. We are kind of slaughtering some innocents right now. that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. Deep crevice that led to a deeper cave. You can't even in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure angry cussedness. Jump in there. So, yeah, you don't just jump in there, though.
See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide. And I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit, as they had torches on the walls. At least he's not embellishing on the story. Like, yeah, it was pitch black, and I went through barely being able to see, and I was, I was guided by the, the flashes of gunfire, you know, something like that. Engraved Ranger. The custom threaded barrel increases range and piercing power. Okay. How big was this cave? Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hid out there during the Indian Wars. problem in games like this guys it's like uh, it, and honestly i think state of decay kind of ruined me uh or zombie games in general like kind of ruined me i can't just shoot for people's bodies anymore i don't know if you guys ever noticed in any game i play i'm always just going for headshots and it feels people probably look at me like dude what is this guy do just shoot him in the body i don't know i just and then I like catch myself. I'm like, dude, do I ever like shoot for the body? They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those the murdered by the horse yeah. soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts. Yo, center mass, it is. That's the thing. Is when I came up in the military. To be honest. I was more concerned with the live ones uh, than the dead ones. You always ones. aim for center mass. Always. shots. Like you gotta shoot them more than once. Nobody has time for that. How come you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well, I pursued him into the Cave of Death. Yeah. 
I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. As his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul would have no rainbow, the eye had no tears. He said I was a great warrior. A coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart, and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me, though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. where I couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kind of like a mirror. What kind of bullshit story? <laughs> I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. <clears throat> chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo-jumbo. Mumbo-jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few <laughs> details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. Dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. Dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of them. At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady. <laughs> this is like three or four, dude. <laughs> Steep climb up creek ahead of me, me turn it and on scrambled hard, up actually. those rocks like a mountain goat. Uh, I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. I put it on normal, and then the game was like, you did the first level too easy, put it on hard, so now it's on hard. And 
wouldn't you know it? That crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches surrounding me. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not gonna drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. Come on, dude. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. So how do you use these legendary guns? Oh, I see it. So when you got get them, they change. So now the six suitor is legendary. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him, and never did collect my goddamn bounty. All that? All that? Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem, uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of right? I did my best, sir. We all did. I've never heard I've never heard of this serious Sam. Is that a is that a game obviously? Gonna deport me from where? It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. 
story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding him about how he had no ambition. Well, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Cofferville just to shut her up. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own damn hometown. Others pay dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, and now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. You just gotta wait the son of a bitch is out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. from above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. Company. God damn him. Heroic men like him who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Like Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! Goldfield, doesn't it? Damn. Shit is quick. That's Silas Reeves! What the hell? Blam! Blam! He came away victorious, taking <laughs> down those thieving dolphins. His name? Silas Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing.
Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. Now we get to hear how it really happened. It was early evening, not high noon. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. The Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I'd been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something <clears throat> reckless. And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffeeville. Shoot a dare you! dogs, tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. The problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Daltons pull up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons and they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plan me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. Trap. It was Emma, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Greaves. This is where it ends for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. 
understood how it felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. You are dead, Lado! Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? Yeah. But I have to admit, that boy had grit. You get those suckers! It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't get away with this! And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track them to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. Really much of a swamp. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Not by my recollection. It was damp and foggy as hell. Really? Really? It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. It was autumn. The maple trees were in full color, red as blood. The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. Bury them in the swamp! Where where they stand? Except for some son of bitches ahead of me wanted to do me harm, so I had to face them alone. I wondered why my compatriots didn't come running when they heard the shots. So did you find the Daltons? Not yet, but I did have the questionable pleasure of meeting a few of their friends. had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause.
Let's go. and my reinforcements was nowhere to be seen. Point B and I was under serious attack. Had some excellent DLC too. Check out the Serious Sam games. I'm gonna have to look. Are they on Steam? But luckily, a barn materialized as if right before my eyes. I scrambled up top to get a better view. Like, as soon as you start talking about shit materializing... But I just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running through the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. Steve. So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Oh. Steve. Steve. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. Indians? There were Indians? No. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp? That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. No, oh, I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred thing. It's a bond like no other. I'm not gonna lie, this story type is absolute legend status. Like, the way that is structured is so good. I, I don't think I've ever played a game like this. Like, especially where he's like changing the story up and shit. That shit's hilarious. And then you and the player, you're kind of just like, I'm just like, yo, what's next, dude? Bounty hunters! Stop that, so bitch! <laughs> So did you ever find the damn Daltons? Not yet, but I did find a few of their cousins. <gasps> you Kansans breed like rabbits. Or Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about. <laughs>
Dalton boys were out there somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. Is this game good? Yo, this game is fun as hell, man. They are in Steam, yeah. I'll, I'll check. I'm gonna check those games out later on. And that's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was in that a fusillade of bullets come raining down from our house, screen? and those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. But among those men that were shooting me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. My compadres? That's it for you! Like you don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something. I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn as hell. <laughs> Right. Good. 
right about then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh. It turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! I seen that coming from a mile away, dude. The Daltons had played That's me like a fit. Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Oh, well, yeah, but I was in a fight. Did you hear about that ship that's gonna launch next year? Largest one in the world? Um, You're well, talking about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed to be. I don't think it's even <laughs> So anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic is unsinkable. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how do you get off it, Mr. Green? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow, I managed to finally disembark. It was time to settle this once and for all. to come at me one at a time. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. How do you even do that? What? got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. Uh, Monster, you have a great night. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868, and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. 
The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but me and my older brothers were bigger and heavier. They were already dead. And right then I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo you know about. But Bob eluded me until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. It's kind of dark. I'd been on their trail for months, ever since they left their hideout in the Bighorn Mountains. Led by Butch Cassidy, they were a loose association of outlaws who robbed banks and trains from Colorado to Montana. Among them was the Sundance Kid, and that murderous hombre I was tracking, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Were you a part of that giant Pinkerton posse after the Wild Bunch? No, boy. A circus like that would have slowed me down. Besides, I wanted Bryant all to myself. I'd heard about a large shipment of gold being transported to Wilcox, Wyoming on the Overland Flyer. I figured the Wild Bunch would likely hit such a treasure, and by God, I figured right. They blew the bridge with the intention of forcing the train to stop. Well, I assumed the Wild Bunch was likely in the still intact part of the train high above, so I had no choice but to make my way up through the passenger cars dangling down. I was determined to make that some bitch Bob pay for what he did to my brothers. I found the device they used to blow the tracks, so I knew I was headed in the right direction. My ears are still ringing from blowing up that bridge. What'd you say? I can't hear a goddamn thing. Well, I made my way off unscathed and came upon a few members of the gang and had no choice but to dispatch them. That son of a bitch! Ah! It's a from there, I had to negotiate an even more precarious route. You're dead. But first, I would need to get my ass out of there. Knocked up all the way. These uh guns here are quite nice. The Ranger. When you're dual wielding it, it's pretty hard. I jumped from the frying pan into the fire as the train was clearly fixing to fall. I found the gang. But in order to find old Bob, I needed to fight my way forward past a whole passel of desperados. Yeah, I didn't want to get rid of that. I'll to try to find... Oh, there it is. I see one. Maybe? Outside, inside, any way I could, I made my way towards my brain. Well, what about the pass 
passengers? It was mostly a freight train, as I recall. There were no passengers huh? aboard that day. As I mentioned before, I am not fond of heights. But I was too busy dodging bullets to worry about falling to my death. Odds were I was likely to die that day anyway. So I was determined to take down as many of those bastards as I could. It was like shooting ducks in a shooting gallery. The only difference is these damn ducks shot back. I kept hoping the law would show up and give me a hand. You mean like that giant Pinkerton posse that I read about? Did they come riding in, guns a blazing to help? Help? From the Pinkertons? <laughs> no, son. I had to fight the wild bunch all by my lonesome, as usual. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Tight <laughs> <laughs> cover! Retreat! Retreat! Got everybody! They'll kill us all! Is those dime novels didn't portray this as it happened, did they? Only a few stragglers were left. I had to cut them down pronto if I was gonna stay on old Bob's trail. Once I silenced all those guns, I went searching for my nemesis, determined to finally have my justice. But the only survivor who welcomed me was George Flatnose Curry. Who was he? The fastest gun in the gang. Right after Sundance, I mean. And Kid Curry, and maybe Elsie Lay. Though some folks might dispute that.
I keep forgetting I gotta dodge and, and move the, the thing back. Okay. Dude, my reaction time was 0 0.0259. That's not even a half a second. That's not even a half a second. The fastest gun in the gang. Right after Sundance, I mean. And Kid Curry. And maybe Elsie Lay. Though some folks might dispute that. Very same day, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid decided to leave the Wild Bunch behind and decamp for South America. I just had to dodge immediately. They ended up living down there for many years, but I'm sure you already know all about that. That man was fast. I tried to find Bob Bryant, but it was as if he'd disappeared. Sometime later, I heard the Wild Bunch was back together. Kid Curry escaped from jail, and now he was running the whole shebang. So I took to their trail, as I was still in pursuit of my brother's killer and hoped that he was back with them. Curry's kind of crazy, ain't he? Don't let him hear you saying that. Anyways, I tracked those boys to a camp right outside Parachute, Colorado. Who's shooting at? We're on the fire! <sighs> so I thought those barrels were explosive. If we don't kill them, we're gonna kill us! So the barrels chat are they, they're, those ones are not explosive. Just so just so you guys know. Someone's coming. Who the hell's that? Numbered, I didn't bother with a warning shot. I just started taking those bastards down. That's it for you. Oh. 
Old Bob wasn't among them, and neither was Kid Curry. I could sense them close by, however, plotting something nasty. I just needed a clue as to their whereabouts. A map with their bold one. plan <laughs> clearly marked. This time they were fixing to blow up a train trestle. Property of the Union Pacific. The plan clearly indicated how they were fixing to undermine several of the weakest wooden supports. Like back in the day, they literally built this shit out of tree. Like it's actual tree. They didn't even Kid like Curry shave was it considered down or the wildest of the wild on there and everything. It was said that he fathered eighty-five bastard children. I played Army of Two say before, it was yeah. Only five. Never on my channel, but uh, like way back in that, I played it when I was in the military with one of my friends. Kid Curry had bragged to a whore how he was going to rob a train heading to the U.S. Mint in Denver. And that whore, Fat Sally, she told me. Fat Sally? The bridge was rigged with dynamite, so I decided I'd best be careful confronting those bastards. And I made it a point to remove any dynamite that I came across. A moment later, I saw a ladder that somehow had escaped my attention. Don't you blow us up now. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. bunch did not take kindly to my presence and attempted to blow my head off. It appeared the kid had found a number of new recruits to bolster their ranks. I guess there's always desperate men willing to trade their lives for stolen treasure. What happened next? Well, having removed the first bundle of dynamite, I decided I might as well remove the other one. Once that was done, I figured I'd find my way from there. I had to remove more of that damn dynamite. It must have been terrifying trying to make your way across. I was sweating it a bit, but then I noticed a footbridge tied up on high, so I shot the rope.
So that was all the dynamite? Funny you should mention that, darling. As actually there was a fourth charge impeding my progress. Once I removed it, my path was pretty clear. So I proceeded onward, and realized that that way just wasn't going to work. I needed an alternate path forward. Concentration for headshots. I'm looking for an alternate path, but what up over onto that ledge maybe? Yeah. <clears throat> Luckily I found a cave and as I made my way back to the bridge I saw something that concerned me. It was a long burning fuse and it was moving fast as hell. I had to catch it. The burning fuse was so damn quick, I had to run like the wind. I almost had it, but no! Thought I was gonna have a coronary when I lost sight of those sparks. My heart was pounding like a sledgehammer. I knew that failure meant boom! Then, finally, at the last moment... Whew! Of course, I was successful, or clearly I wouldn't be talking to you folks here today. Naturally, I removed the last dynamite charge. Well, it was a touching reunion. But by this time, I was thoroughly exhausted and dragging my ass as I was not a young man anymore. <sighs> More precisely, they found me. <laughs> 
Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, Kid Curry opened up on me with a goddamn Gatling gun. It was hidden in this tunnel and pretty well shielded. This dude tells the best stories, Chet. And I want to thank everyone. We got over 400 likes on the stream. I really do appreciate it. <clears throat> Located some dynamite. I still, however, had my work cut out for me. Stupid contraption! Kid Curry himself. He had decided to stop pussyfooting around and deal with me personally. Come here. Yo, that... Uh, that's so fast, man.
too early. Hold on one sec, guys. bro as he was. I was just a bit faster. There we go. I had to die as he lay way. wounded, I demanded to know the whereabouts of Roscoe Bob Bryant. He shouted at me. Is that what this is about? Bob went with Butch's Sundance to South America. You ain't never finding him. <laughs> Those were his last words. Pretty hardcore last words right there, man. George, so how long is this game? So, uh, Bob Bryant got away? I knew I'd never find him in South America. What about the other killer? Yeah, you kind of glossed over that one. Well, I found Jim not long after my showdown with Ringo. At the time, he was riding with the James Younger gang. Did I neglect to mention that? Jesse James? The greatest outlaw who ever lived? Jesse James was the greatest outlaw. Is there any movies Jesse based on Jesse James? Jesse rolled with Quantrill when he raided Lawrence, Kansas and killed near 200 people, boy. Ah, nothing great about that. And from there, him and his brother went on to rob banks and trains from Kansas to Missouri. Which is why there was such a rich bounty on their heads. 40 grand for both of them, dead or alive. That's one hell of a payday. All right, before we start this mission, give me one sec. All righty, let's do it. I confronted them as they were robbing a train. Bullets were flying at me from every which way. But I knew I'd have to fight my way forward if I was going to find this gym. Huh? <laughs> 
Now, wait a second. Now, how'd they stop this train in the first place? Well, the James boys were experts at this. Jesse James could stop a train by staring it down, Jet. They hopped a freight train, having heard there was a big payroll in the express safe. So, I hopped the same train. The James Younger gang was decimated after that little fiasco they had in Northfield, Minnesota. So Jesse needed more men and took on the killer I was after, along with a host of others. I was hoping to find my man and put a bullet in his head. Climbing around that train, I must have swallowed a hundred damn bugs before I the reached James that. James Younger gang pulled the first train robbery west of the Mississippi. Sounds like you hold them in high regard. Everyone knows they were the most famous outlaw gang ever. And you took them all on by your lonesome. Again. I'm finding this all a little hard to swallow, friend. Well, maybe you need to wash it down with some whiskey. By the way, did I mention that that train was flying down those tracks like a bat out of hell? find the gentleman's facilities. Suddenly I have an urgent need to drain my one-eyed snake. Well, I've had more than a few drinks and uh, I've been sitting here for quite a spell. <laughs> right through there. Let me show you. Huh? I never heard so much malarkey in my life. Uh, you think he's bullshitting us? You don't think he's Silas Greaves? I think he's just some old drunk looking for some free liquor. I don't know, Jack. I think I believe him. You don't think he met Jesse James? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That story makes no sense at all. Jack. I mean, you gotta be two bricks short of a load to believe that cock and bull story. I don't agree. Jack, huh? lay off the ball. You seriously think that tired old man went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesse James? <laughs> well, that's better. Did I mention that this Jim was married to the infamous Bell Star? Of course, I didn't learn that until later. Anyway, I made my way forward the best I could. Around the sides, over the roof. At some point, some some bitch saw me and shouted out, It's the damn Pinkertons! It's the damn Pinkertons! Now, I never worked for that limey cocksucker, but I guess they assumed I was one of his assassins. Those evil bastards firebombed Jesse's mother's house and killed his stepbrother. So it's no wonder each and every asshole on that train wanted me dead. Everybody's always mistaking you for somebody else, aren't they? Why is that, I wonder? Don't let me know, Jack. I'm just telling you how I remember. I bet you are. Yeah. It was a rickety ride and quite precarious.
I came across a flat car piled high with logs and had to come up with a creative way to make my way forward. I wondered if I was ever going to find the front of that train, or the bastard I was after. Right about then, I was attacked by some asshole on a Gatlin gun. Well, seems like you run into a lot of them. Asshole? Gatlin guns. Yes, I asshole. did. Now, I don't remember how I took it out. It was either a bullet or dynamite. Where would you find dynamite? Does it really matter, Jack? You're messing with the flow of the story here. Shot from right there. Was looking for Jim and shooting any son of a bitch stupid enough to get in my way. And that included Jesse James himself. Same thing is about this game is if you play it for like the first like I don't know, I'm sure we're a lot of men determined minutes, to die that day. You'd probably just be like hot in hell no, and but you know the game gets so much better.
It was then that Jesse detached the express car from the rest of the damn train. I could see Jesse waiting for me, fixing to kill me so he could get away with all that money. You had a showdown with Jesse James? Of course he didn't. Everybody knows that Jesse was killed by Bob Ford. Yeah. Jesse went out like John Wesley Harden. Coward shot him in the back of the head. Guess it doesn't matter how far you run, does it, Ben? Your past always catches up with you. I didn't kill Jesse James. Just wounded him bad enough to convince him to hang up his guns. What about that Jim fella? What happened to him? I figure he was up front with a gun to the engineer's head. That bastard slipped away again. I'll tell you how I got him. But first, I need to whip my whistle. I don't know, guys. I'm starting to feel like our, our guy here is full of shit. <laughs> After my showdown with Jesse, I continued to track his brother, Frank, and that son of a bitch Jim. I followed those bastards into the high mountains as they were going to ground. What mountains would that be? Somewhere in the Ozarks, I believe. The perfect place to hide out from the authorities. In fact, before I could find them, some Indians who fled the Reds and were hiding out from the military found me first. They probably thought I was a cavalry scout and didn't want me telling the military where they were. Engines? Yeah, they, they could have been uh, Cheyenne, but there was all sorts of renegades roaming the landscape back then. another whiskey, Ben. Nothing better to soothe the troubled soul. Now, where was I? Indians, right. I had more than my share of run-ins with the Red Man. Like that time, did I tell you about Grey Wolf? Yes, sir. You did. Oh, of course I did. In fact, I can still remember that old medicine man's words to me. Jesus Christ, we're back to that again. You carry great darkness in your heart. It will claim your soul. 
You will come to this place again and kill many more men. And your darkness will grow until it consumes everything you are. So, did you ever find him? Who? The man you are after. Let me ask you something, Ben. You ever think about death? Mr. Greaves, are you all right? Oh, I'm not gonna lie, that was a pretty sick, uh... Song when they, uh... Won't you spare me over supernatural. to another year? What is this that I can't see With ice cold hands taking hold of me Well, I am death, none can excel I'll open the door to heaven or hell. Oh, death. Oh, oh, oh death. Won't you spare me over to another year? Oh, oh death. Oh, oh, oh death. Won't you spare me over till another year? So are you gonna answer the question? What question is that? Jim Reed. Did you ever find him? Reed was indeed that son bitch's surname. That's right, Ben. A despicable character. I remember him laughing like a hyena that cold morning they lynched me and my brothers. He was intent on avoiding my vengeance, but nothing was gonna stop me. Nothing. I finally did track those outlaws down. They had long rifles with scopes and were well positioned to pick off any poor soul who came anywhere close. I'm guessing Frank James believed I was responsible for the demise of his brother, Jesse. I couldn't really disagree with the man, as I thought Jesse was dead then as well. He backed off as I closed in on him, but he was still intent on killing me. And when I closed in on him again, he backed off again, looking for a better angle on me. Well, I can't fault Frank for wanting his revenge as I was there for the same damn reason myself. At this point, I'm guessing you think Silas Greaves is a worse murderer than Jim Reed ever was. No, sir. A man who spent half his life killing somebody's brothers, fathers, sons. I think you were just looking for justice, sir. Is that what I was looking for, Dwight? Is that what it was? Justice?
Isn't that why you were hunting the James Gang? The James Gang. Right. I finally found Frank holed up in his mountain cabin, and he was determined to have me dead. It was a pitched battle that could have gone either way. Luckily, I had some dynamite in my possession. Dynamite? On your person? A few sticks, just in case. It's always good to be prepared. Right. I'm just laying out the facts as I remember them, Jack. Show yourself! And that son of a bitch! This is gonna hurt! Take him out! He's just one man! <sighs> Come here! You're gonna bleed! Shack? Well, it went tumbling right off that cliff. With Frank James still in it? Yes, sir. But Frank James is still alive, living in Missouri, showing folks around the family farm for 25 cents a tour. I didn't say he died in the fall, now did I? <laughs> Doug and Mike, I appreciate that, guys. I'm done with this damnable outlaw life! Kill me, don't kill me, do what you will! At this point, I just don't give a shit. I explained to Frank that I had nothing against him personally and that I was looking for someone else. You want Reed? Have at him. I never did like that bastard. I am done here. We parted in peace as Frank pointed out the path to my prey before making his way back down the hill. murderer escape my revenge again. So what happened with Reed? Well, I finally found the last of the gang hiding in a nearby cave. First, I had to dispatch the lookouts. But rather than wander in willy-nilly, I decided it would be better to smoke that son bitch out. Hey, Reed! I shouted. No wonder you're so ornery. Can't be easy being married to Belle Star. While you're off providing for the family, she's spreading her legs for every Tom, Dick, and Cole younger. Not an attractive woman exactly, but very friendly. At least she was to me. Son of a bitch! It was then that the last bunch of bandits jumped out of hiding. Why won't this asshole give up? Will someone please kill him?
Eventually, it was just me and Reed. I had waited a long time to face him down, so I could repay him for what he did to my brothers. This dude is stupid fast, man. And I drew too soon. Get my damn hand speed up. I had waited a long time to face him down, so I could repay him for what he did to my brothers. I had 70% speed that time, dude. My reaction time on that one, that other one was quite slow.
and repay him I did. I was able to go pretty quick on that one. And I didn't have to do it with no honor. That dude was fast. Well, I don't know about you boys, but I'm pretty beat. Well, it's too damn bad you never found that Bob character. Seems a shame he never had to pay. Well, funny thing about that. I did have one more chance at him. Six months ago, I heard that Butch and Sundance were back in the States and had gathered up some of their old gang. I tracked them down, hoping that Roscoe Bob Bryant had returned with them. So, you're saying they didn't die down in Bolivia? That's what I'm saying. Butch and Sundance? I thought Butch was the dude and Sundance was the horse. Forty years I had waited to get my hands on the last of my brother's killers. Not even an army of demons could have stopped me now. Both Johnny Ringo and Jim Reed fell fairly quickly. But the last one... Roscoe Bob Bryant. That son of a bitch had managed to escape my vengeance time and time again. I couldn't even be certain I'd recognize him after all those years. By now, he had to be close to seven. But for all you know, he could have been dead. That thought had indeed crossed my mind. As did others. For instance, did my thirst for vengeance turn me into something worse than the man I was after? By this point in my storied career, I had killed more men than Bob Bryant ever had. I was furious as hell at that bastard for making me who I am. A man with no family, no friends. Nothing could stop me from taking his life. I'd been after that killer forever. From the time I rode with Billy the Kid. But that chapter of my story you already know. Chapter of that fairy tale, you mean? Suddenly it was 1910. There I was, an old man roaming a ghost town dead almost two decades. Just like me. I wasn't about to call it quits. For an old man, he's still moving pretty quick. Even though the ghosts of my dead brothers were begging me to end what I started so long ago. Mr. Graves, are you all right? Would you like some water? The Wild Bunch knew I was there. They were after a treasure they had hidden before they fled, buried in the grave of a dead amigo. Some folks think the town is haunted, so they figured there wouldn't be many people poking around. <sighs>
I intended to fill that grave with Bob Bryant's corpse. But like I said, the bandits knew I was on to them. They lured me in and hit me with everything they had. I didn't even mean to shoot that TNT, it was just in my way. prevailed uh, since you said you failed. Actually, in that moment, I did not prevail. So I suppose we're talking to a ghost. Funny you should put it like that, Jack. Because when I woke up, uh, from the dead? There was silence all around me. I could swear to God I saw Billy then. Billy who? Billy the kid. William Bonney. He was shooting at me from a rooftop. Here, there, and even over there. You are titched in the head. Mr. Greaves, perhaps we should switch you to coffee? You see that old Indian again, too? No, but I did see Billy's killer, Patrick Floyd Garrett. He came at me guns a blazing. <gasps> I knew that old war horse had died two years before. I wondered if maybe I was dead, too, and confronting the ghosts of my past. <sighs> Damn, this shit is hard as hell. Okay, so we're fighting ghosts, chat. But I knew that old war horse had died two years before. I wondered if maybe I was dead too and confronting the ghosts of my past. Perhaps all my sins were coming back to haunt me and, and drag me down to perdition. Henry Plummer throw dynamite at me. of the cemetery, I saw John Wesley Hardin, just like I remembered him.
Robert Ollinger appeared with his terrible double-barrel shotgun. But the ghost army was stopping me. Uh, my father-in-law got hit with a fallen branch. He spent the rest of his life talking to dogs. Newman Hayes Clanton, William Brocious, John Peters Ringo, they all wanted me dead. <laughs> The Dalton brothers, Robert and Grant, guardians of the Garden of the Dead. George Curry and Harvey Logan, alias Kid Curry, both thirsty for vengeance from the great beyond. Jesse, Woodson, James, and Jim Reed. Each one deader than the next. I thought I would go crazy. Thought? Alonzo Longabar. The Sundance Kid? Like a general leading his Legion of the Dead. You told us before that you'd seen him alive. <clears throat> he was alive. voice called to me from afar. It was Robert Leroy Parker, a.k.a. Butch Cassidy, coming at me from out of the fog. Thanks for taking care of that bastard. But the kid wasn't quite deceased. Not yet. Takes more than one little bullet to kill the likes of me, partner. Those two looked like they hadn't seen each other for quite a while. Clearly, they were no longer amigos. Shit. I was hoping I wouldn't have to kill you. You won't have to, Butch. I'm killing you first. I asked him about Bob Bryant. But they were too busy with their own heated conversation. Let me get this shit straight. You want my money and the love of my life? You frittered it all away, Butch. Etta's mine. So is that damn money. I didn't want to shoot anybody until I had an answer to my question. But those boys didn't give me much of a choice.
that's fucking why is this gotta be so hard dude there's no way What? Yo, that's crazy. I just lost all that speed. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid died there in that cemetery not six months ago. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were killed by the Bolivian Army. Everybody knows that. That's the legend, but it ain't the truth. So, uh, you never found Bob? There is no Bob. This old some bitch ain't even Silas Greaves. Sir, is that true? Have you been pulling our legs this whole time? Well, not the whole time. Oh, man, I think you've worn out your welcome here. Maybe you're right, Jack. Maybe it's time to pay. You see, Ben, or should I say Bob, your past always catches up with you. I, I was a different man back then, crazy, drinking. I I've changed my ways, I swear to you. If I could turn back the clock, I... But you can't, Bob.
Me and Bob's got a pay, chat. It's what it's all about, right? Bob, I don't redemption. This isn't Red Dead Redemption. Killed our brothers. Put the coin in my mouth. How dirty that coin probably was. Hashtags, uh, you know what? Bob's dead. Why'd you toy with me like that? Telling those tales, knowing all along. Why not just lay your cards on the table? Here. I won't have it said that I left you with nothing. That's how you want it? So be it. Can't murder a man's brothers. Holy shit! Dwight, Molly, move against that wall. Go! See my speed percentage. Did you know it was him all along? Cassidy told me Bob was in Abilene before he died. But I wasn't sure Ben was my man until he revealed how much he knew about Ringo and Reed. The coin, of course. Well, that was the last nail in that particular coffin. I better go get the sheriff. You okay, boy? You look a mite shook up. Uh, Dwight, maybe you best go home. Uh, young Eisenhower here is leaving for West Point tomorrow. Uh, he shouldn't get caught up in something like this. I think I might head out myself at this juncture. Unless you want to stop me, Jack. No, sir, huh, Mr. Graves. So where are you going now? Now that you had your revenge? Doesn't really matter, does it? As I have sold my soul for it, and will never again walk with those I have lost. Oh, that was pretty cool, guys. That was pretty cool. It was a little short little game. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely short and sweet. Uh, I've never played a game with like, you know, the storytelling was so funny. Like there, it, it was like, a, you know what I mean? It was like one of those fun shooting games, but like the story like really did start to get kind of funny and like the way he told it, it, it was unique. It definitely was unique. Uh, we beat it in about four hours. It took us four hours to beat. Uh, but again, I really appreciate all the love, all the support, guys. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back with some Starfield in the morning. And then I got something uh, uh, new on the horizon for us in the afternoon. So, uh, or later in the day. Ever heard of Weird West? No, I've never heard of that. Uh, but again, thank you so much, guys. We got over 500 likes. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was just like I said, a little... A little something George gifted over, so I figured we'd check it out. It was short and sweet, and it looked kind of cool. So I was like, you know what? Let's check it out.
<laughs> I'll check it out, F Crude. I'll check it out for sure. Ah, George, thank you for the five gifted, man. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, when's the next Cyberpunk live? The new, uh, the day it drops, uh, Lonely, we'll be playing uh, Cyberpunk. I was hoping that the uh, the patch, because there, there's there's the patch that's going to release new things into the game, but not the DLC. Um, I, I was hoping that what that comes out a little bit before the DLC, and we'll get into it, and then, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think they're releasing it separate, though. They're releasing the... Like the patch, and then they're releasing the, the actual DLC like a week later or something like that. At least I, I think that's what I heard. Uh, uh, will I try the Mortal Kombat story? Mortal Kombat stories? Yeah, probably. Even though I am absolutely... Tr well, I, I used to be trash at those games, so... Mm. Alright, guys. Um, you guys have a great rest of your night. I'm gonna go get some sleep. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!